It's my great pleasure to introduce this next presentation on testing methodology to quantify carbon footprint and the first results by Patrice Bretel. Hello, thank you for watching this presentation. Last year, the French Polar Institute proposed at the last COMNAP in Plovdiv to act as a beta tester for carbon footprint evaluation uh, for the NAPs. And uh, here are presented the return of experience and the methodology we used and also the first results of our carbon footprint. The main objective was to test the method called bilan carbon from the French Polar uh, on the French Polar Agency activities and this method is from the uh, uh, French Environmental Agency ADEM and we asked to an external subcontractor to do that. The second objective was of course to uh, get some uh, 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 first estimate of our carbon footprint. So we had to define the relevant perimeters of the activities the different e times uh, applying the method, then choosing the good uh, reference uh, time scale. Then we tested the data collection method and evaluated its accuracy. Then at the end, we could get this order of magnitude of our carbon footprint, and uh, we have a reflection or uh, discussions about what uh, could be the best metrics to use after to establish a strategy. So the general context of the French Polar Institute and its activities, that's a public agency supporting polar science. Its uh, headquarters are based in Plouzane in France, in Brittany, west of France, in a quite rainy regions, region. And uh, his missions are to coordinate, support and implement scientific and technological projects in polar and subpolar regions. There are different steps, starting with project selection with experts, then uh, the deployment of research observatories. It means uh, producing long-term data series of high quality. Then uh, providing a financial and human support to all the scientific programs. He also uh, has to uh, deal with the logistics and infrastructure of the station, mainly in Antarctica. IPEF is also doing uh, expedition organization like scientific travels on the East Plateau in Antarctica. And then at the end, uh, the French Polar Institute participates to the scientific knowledge dissemination. We then four geographical sites in Arctic, uh, in relation with the Alfred Wegener Institute, we are working in New Ellison, where we are renting facilities to a um, private Norwegian company, the Kings Bay. And we also have a station called Corbel, uh, five kilometers from New Ellison. In the Subantarctic Island, we work closely with uh, French territories, uh, which are uh, doing the logistics and infrastructures. Uh, maintenance and um, IPEV in that case is um, implementing the scientific programs. And a big part of the activity concern Antarctica with the logistics from uh, France to uh, Hobart or Christchurch and uh, the junction from Hobart to um, Adeliland to the station du Mondioville where we are fully in charge of logistics and infrastructure and also the Concordia station linked with the logistic travels from the coast. And we are sharing this station with the Italians. The methodology applied for the carbon footprint evaluation. The bilan carbon method from Adam is based on a separation of different items in regard of the activities cons considering energy Ex, uh, expanding consumption, refrigerant, cooling liquids, which is quite important in regard of the potential greenhouse effect, goods and services, packaging, professional travels, freight to uh, from Europe to station or from station to Europe, waste. And all those items 
uh, are linked to a database which is updated each year uh, to have the equivalent of uh, a CO2 uh, impact, so it's translated in turn equivalent of CO2. We identified four entities for our activities with the headquarters Arctic, Subantarctic Islands and Antarctica and the reference year consider is 2019. So we have each entity a detailed uh, collection of data uh, mainly based on uh, invoices, purchase orders, or uh, missions preparation, and so on. So we have a detailed analysis of each item, like ACB, gas, NGO, natural gas, electricity invoice, especially for the Subantarctic and the Arctic Islands. And um, so for each subject, we, uh, we make a link to the database uh, and then we can produce the overall uh, turn equivalent CO2 uh, for all the activities. Some specificities, of course, we have a detailed approach for freight from Europe to station and from station to Europe, considering how we uh, transfer the, the goods and the equipment and the distances. And uh, we also have a careful look at the professional travels. Considering the long-term investments, like uh, buildings, furniture, vehicles, machines, and computers, the problem was a bit more tricky because we do not have an homogeneous uh, perception in regard of the different sites, especially on the Subantarctic Islands, where we do not manage the infrastructure on in the Arctic. So what we did is that we just considered the long-term investment for uh, the year uh, of reference, and uh, we divide it by the depreciation period we consider in regard of the type of infrastructure like buildings, it's 20 years, uh, vehicles, for example, it's seven years. Then we have an overall um, analysis and we can produce the uh, uh, of uh, ton and CO2. And so here are the main results. What we can see is that the overall footprint, uh, the carbon footprint of the French Polar Institute for one year is of 12,270 tons equivalent CO2 with a good accuracy estimated to 6%. It corresponds to the deployment of 74 research projects implemented through more than 100 field campaigns. More than 320 scientists have been on the field last year, or for the year of reference, and a total of uh, up to 36,000 uh, man days on the field, including technical staff. So what are the main, first of all, 80% of the carbon footprint of uh, the French Polar Institute is due to our activities in Antarctica, which is not very surprising because we are fully in charge there, uh, considering half of the uh, activity in Concordia. The main source of carbon is mainly freight and transportation and travels. And that's for Antarctica close to 50% of the total IPEV carbon footprint. The partnership introduced quite high inaccuracies, and that's why when we are looking at the different entities, Arctic and uh, Antarctic, we are very cautious because we would need a better quantification instead of standard approximation. And for example, uh, in Ulesun, uh, we just consider the consumption of energy, but we do not have, or Kings Bay cannot provide what is the overall uh, carbon footprint in regard of the number of people coming on the site. For the Antarctic Island, we made big approximation for the, um, the freight, especially with the use of the research vessel Marion Dufresne. And energy is uh, just uh, related to surface in buildings in uh, Antarctic Islands. So we can improve the method for sure. The data collection also can be improved because we had to go through all the documents uh, for all the year and it's very time consuming. 
and we should have from the start when we are doing the purchases when we are um, uh, implementing the the activities having a kind of a, a real time uh, collect in regard of the carbon footprint so from those numbers we should define some relevant metrics to uh, quantify uh, our footprint through our activities and trying to get some more uh, to improve our practices and uh, we can consider the absolute value which is a very interesting as we are living in a finite world it's very important to to keep in mind this value and that's the one that should be reduced but that's interesting only internally for a map on a yearly basis, because it's not very uh, relevant to, for comparison between apps. Of course, each app has very uh, different types of activities. So uh, that shouldn't be used as something to for comparison, but for internally use, it's very interesting and that's probably the most important value. Then we can also define ratios. And on our case at the French Polar Institute, we could see that uh, if we look at the man day in the field in general for all the entities, uh, we can uh, calculate a ratio and it represents 0 0.34 ton of uh, equivalent CO2 per man day in the field. But if we look more carefully to Antarctica, for example, it's up to 0 0.6. So there are, uh, of course, the effect of the uncertainties on the Arctic and Subantarctic islands, the quantification, but there are also uh, the fact that the activity is a bit different from different sites, and even for each scientific program, like uh, uh, scientific travels will have a much higher impact in regard to carbon footprint. So that's a real concern to uh, define ratio it can be a very interesting tool to uh, follow the activities and improve the practice, but uh, that should be a subject for a op very open discussion between labs. Then we could imagine exchanging services to reduce uh, carbon footprint uh, by considering those ratio. From the study, we could uh, provide some, get some targets and recommendation. The targets, the French Polar Institute is a reduction of uh, up to 4% per year of its own carbon footprint with, uh, to reach the objective of the factor 4 from the Conference of Paris for the year 2050. Recommendations also arise from the study from the external subcontractor and the first one is improving logistical um, activities through uh, how about did you voyages, especially looking at the vessel speed. Reducing air travel and freight can also be very important and we should do that as much as possible. And uh, introducing automation of systems and uh, looking for more versatility of scientists could be also a nice way just to stabilize or do more with the same footprint. And then improving energy management and introducing alternative energy is a main goal. Of course, it's quite challenging because of the optimized system. On the so as a conclusion, travels and freight footprint is far ahead of all the other carbon sources. Accuracy and metrics are critical to quantify footprint and to improve the practices, that's for sure. And uh, we should also introduce uh, margins in the calendar of season, uh, especially in order to guarantee the success of the operation. Nothing is worse than uh, transporting something to Antarctica and coming back with it. And uh, we should consider a constant optimization of the practices, as uh, it can be critical just to remain on metrics. I think a general uh, behavior should be to improve as much as we can all the practices to reduce energy consumption and then to reduce the uh, carbon footprint. Technology and innovation for station modernization shall integrate as a priorities the environmental targets, including automation, green energy, reducing waste production and so on. Thank you for your attention. I am at your uh, disposal for answering and we finished on a picture of the last collab two years ago, uh, showing that innovation in uh, techniques for logistics 
especially transferring on ICIs, is also a very good way to uh, guarantee the success of the operation and then optimizing the ratios. Thank you. Bye.